Okay, so up in the flash map, it told us that at hex 30 is going to be the next thing, and that was the component section. So you would then proceed into your manual. You would find the FCBA. Well, that's just basically saying the you know component base address plus zero, so FL component. How do you interpret it? Well, there's this old thing, so let's take a look there. So the value at the least significant byte is 1C, so that is 1 and C. And then the least significant three bits is going to be 100. And so 100 is telling you component one is eight megabytes large. So one flash chip out of the two flash chips is eight megabytes large. Then the next bits are telling you that the second component is four megabytes large. And that's exactly what you would expect because you are currently holding a 12 megabyte flash chip and you know it has two components. Next in the components section at flash component base address plus four is the invalid instructions register. You can see this is set to all zeros, so there's no invalid instructions that specifically it wants to prevent from being sent there. So that's all good and well. One thing you might imagine this being used for is, for instance, you know, there's potentially dangerous things that might accidentally get sent, like the full chip erase flash opcode. And so the point of that particular section was to say, like, if someone comes along and uses software sequencing to try to, you know, pass through a full chip erase, I want you to actually block that in hardware. Now, you can't block that one because this is actually the required opcodes section from the Intel data sheets. But if you look at some data sheet for a specific SPI flash chip, you can see that they might support multiple erase commands. So you may be required to support C7, in order to use a particular chip on Intel, but it might also support hex 60. And so then you might wanna say, well, I only wanna let C7 through and I wanna block 60 because it might have completely different behavior. So anyways, that's just an example. It's not actually used on this particular system. Next, there's the flash partition boundary register. And you can see this has what looks like a little Andean 00080000. Then there is the flash partition boundary register. We showed a picture before saying, you know, you could partition a single flash chip, but more often than not, it's gonna be used for partitioning between two flash chips, and we do indeed have two flash chips. The first, first flash chip is eight megabytes, and this particular value is interpreted as bits 24 through 12. So basically, this is just saying the boundary is an eight megabyte boundary for flash partition zero versus one. 